Jacques, uh, Enzo Ferrari once said, you never stop learning, especially when you're losing. What have you learned in the last couple of races? Uh, first of all, you know, it doesn't matter how, how competitive you are at the beginning, and you know, you, you, you can uh, get caught up. Um, and uh, that's a little bit what happened uh, this year. And uh, with, the, with the car, we, because we have an amazing car, uh, now everybody caught up, so it's, it's, it's not that amazing anymore, it's, but it's still the same car. Um, it's, it's, it's still very possible to not get the points you, you should get. So, uh, you know, it doesn't, you always have to fight as hard as you can and to work as hard as you can. Uh, but we, we, knew, we, knew, we always knew, knew that anyway. Do you ask any more of yourself in that situation? You always ask of yourself as much as you can. But when, when you're competing, you know, uh, I know as a competitor, I always want to do the best, whatever it just takes. Now, just come from Wimbledon, another Montreal lad, Greg Rosetsky, said that when he was beaten, he said, look, I'm not the finished article yet. Do you think you're the finished article as a racing driver yet? <laughs> Why do you say that? Now, I'm 26, there's a lot to come. Mm -hmm. uh, in what specific areas do you, do, you, do you feel that there maybe is room for improvement? It's not one area, it's a little bit of everything. You know, the, the big learning steps you do then when you change categories and going through the years. But once, but now I'm at the point where it's, it, you're just learning a little bit of everything, always improving slightly it, it, for it to become more natural. Um, and basically you adapt to the changes. Uh, you're never 100% as good as you could be. There's always a small room for improvement, but it's not something that's, that you can see clearly. Oh, I have to do this better. It just you know, comes naturally with time. Mm. Is there a central frustration about being a driver in as much as that, unlike other sportsmen, you're not completely self-reliant? There are other things beyond your control. Yeah, but that's, that's normal in life, isn't it? <laughs> there, there's nothing that's 100% your control. Uh, you, yeah, you can have a mechanical failure, um, but that also depends on how you work with the team. It's partly your job to make sure that that the car is is ready. Uh, the job you do with your engineer, you know, where to figure out where the problems are, to make the car, the setup ready. So it's too easy to say, oh, the setup is wrong. It's not my fault because you're the driver and you're the one who's working with the engineer to make the setup better, and and that's part of the driver's job as well. It's not only racing. So if you look at yourself in this first half of the season. Is there anything you would have done differently? Finished more races to start with. <laughs> you know, it's too easy to say, oh, I, would have, I would have done this differently and, and so on. Um, you always try to do the best you can. And when, when you make a mistake, when something goes wrong, it's important to understand what went wrong so, so you don't do it again. But apart from that, it's too easy to think, oh, you know, if I'd done this like that and if I'd done that other thing like this, then we'd be in front. The problem is everybody can think like that. Mm -hmm. How long does, say, an inquest into a mistake, like, for instance, let's take Montreal, big race for you in the personal sense, you made a, a mistake, self-acknowledged mistake, how long does it take you to get over something like that, or is it still, does it gnaw away inside you? It depends. If, if, uh, if, I, ha if I would have had a month of doing nothing afterwards, <laughs> it would have been uh, probably more difficult, but right away on Tuesday morning we were in uh, Silverstone doing some PR um, work, and uh, Wednesday, Thursday, testing in many cool, so did I didn't have much time to just sit on it and think about it. Uh, after many cool, then I, you know, I went through it and and to try and understand what had happened. And then you just you know put it behind and look look ahead. It's the same thing when you win. You have to put it behind and look ahead as well. You can't just spend two months thinking, oh, it's great, I won. You know, there's other races coming. You mentioned the PR side of things. There is there a danger in Formula One as a as a leading driver that the image obscures the reality. Possibly, but um, th that's not very important, is it? Um, the, you know, the reality is, your pr is what you have private, and, and you want to keep it private. Um, people you know, will be very different in private, and then they won't be themselves in, in public. You know, nothing wrong with that. And um, for me, though, it's important to just be myself, basically, uh, to you know that that's how I'm happy. Is there any pressure on the though for you to conform to certain standards of behavior no, or no there, there, there's no pressure to do that uh, possibly the fact that i've been winning you know may, makes it easier for me to be myself but um i wouldn't I'm, I'm not trying to be different i'm just trying to be myself and that's it uh, 
I'm sure a few things are the same and a few things are different. But I'm not, I'm not in there either trying to, to prove a point and just to be different for the sake of being different. It, I just want to be myself. How difficult is it to have you know, normal relationships within Formula One, you know, with your fellow drivers, let's say? Well, it's, it's, it's not easy because you, you hardly have the time to spend uh, with, with the fellow drivers. Uh, I'm, I'm good friend with Mika Salo, but I was a good friend with him before getting into Formula One from the, you know, the Japan Times and uh, you know, Coulthard as well. We get along pretty well, but it's mostly outside of the racetrack that, that you, you can have a relationship. During the, the, on race weekends, you, you, you don't have the time to, to do that. So do you, find, do you find the sort of psychological inner battle that goes on in Formula One, do you find that a challenge? or Is, it, is that as real as people try and make no, it out the, to be? I don't, maybe there is some psychological battle, um, but not what I'm concerned. Uh, I get along with pretty much everyone, and uh, we're, I'm not in there for, to beat the other guy outside of the race car. I'm in there to beat him inside the race car. Uh, if, if I can't beat him on the racetrack, then I'm not going to invent stuff uh, just to destabilize him. That's, I don't think that, that that's fair. Um, but it's easy to get in that trap. It's very easy to just start doing without you noticing. And do you find that that's happening to you? Are people trying to do that to you? I know there's been a lot of adverse comments no, about you. No, not, not really. Uh, Michael said a couple of things at the beginning of the season last year, and then I didn't buy it, and it stopped, and that, that was it. Uh, I, think, I think there's a good respect in between us, and, and that's the best way. Can you assess Michael as a fellow pro? Mm. I, I don't understand. Uh, yeah, as, as a fellow driver, yeah. assess Michael. You know, if you look at him, mm -hmm. you know, how he does his job. Oh, yeah. um, well, he's a great driver, of course. Uh, he, he's very fast, and uh, Ferrari is going forward now, so I mean, he's done a good job. Uh, I don't know him personally that much, so it's you know I can't I can't really say. But uh, you know he he's a quick driver. Uh, but what ma he? what makes a great driver? Many different things. Uh, first of all, I, th I think you, you have to be mentally strong, um, intelligent, because uh, it's your head that controls your body. Um, and it's your head that will stop you from making the mistakes over and over and over. But, and you also, ne you, you also need a feel, a special feel, to, to understand what's going on, to feel the car. Um, and, and, s and you have to be... Uh, how would you say? Maybe a little bit selfish for, for when you're racing, because you know you're not out there to help the other ones. You're out there for yourself, and and you need to hunger, hunger to, for more. You know you 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 have to want it badly. It might sound a bit of a strange question, but do you actually like Formula One? Is it something that maybe when you've com finished your career? That you want to be around, or is it something that you just put to one side and say, "Well, let's say I've done that." No, once once I don't drive, uh, I don't think I will want to be in a paddock because it's not Formula One I like; it's driving a Formula One. So if I'm not driving, I don't want to be there. It's, it's the pure the pure speed, the, the big rush we get out of of driving at those speeds and pushing the edge at those speeds. That that's what I enjoy. Yeah. Is it? Are there also a lot of other distractions in terms of? Well, let's take your personal situation. How often do you have to answer questions about you know, have you signed your contract with Williams yet? Is this new team going to happen? You know, how, how regular is all that? It's, it's always. Um, a lot of, a lot of the, like, questions about contracts, you're not even allowed to discuss your contract. So, well, so what, what do you answer? Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, so they're, they're frivolous questions because you cannot answer them anyway. Legally, you're not allowed to. Uh, but, you know, it's... It's part. It's it's part of, of uh, of of racing, of motor racing. And uh, as soon as there's there's an interest, in, in in drivers and people, then you'll get all sorts of questions, and people want to know, and they will always try to, even though they know that they probably won't get an answer. It's normal that they try. You know, it's like fishing. So is there a game within a game here? I think so. Yeah, there, uh, there's a lot of games with words, and um, it's dangerous. So, mm. You mentioned tyres. Now, tyres has become a fundamental part of Formula One. Is Formula One, do you think, attractive enough to turn to its audience? You looked at, for instance, Manny Cor. It was essentially a boring race until the last two, race, uh, two, two laps. <coughs> Excuse me. Is the product right? Well, the thing is, people will always complain about everything, including me, and that's, that's uh, human nature. Uh, but if it's so boring, then why are there so many spectators and so many viewers, and why are there so many journalists talking about it? Uh, if it's that boring, then people will stop being interested. 
And will there come a point where you're going to have to maybe compromise your racing, racing instincts? And if we take Mandy Cora as an example of it again, were you quite prepared to risk the points you already had in the bag to try and get more? Of course. And would you, and would you do it again? Yeah, definitely. That's why I'm a racer. Uh, if I wasn't like that, and then I wouldn't have made it to Formula One.